Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick look at something that's new from Radio Master that's just been released today. This is the new Nexus X and the Nexus XR flight controllers for helicopters. Now, if you've been looking at the Nexus stuff over the last few months, you might have noticed that the previous version that I looked at back in, I think it was May 2024, has been getting harder and harder to get hold of. And this is the reason. There are these new updated versions designed all around Rotoflight version 2.2. Now I'm just coming to the end of an Ardu copter build with a helicopter and this was also another option to potentially put in that helicopter when I was looking to make that series. I looked at the original Nexus back in May 2024 after a lengthy development cycle with the Rotoflight development team and Radiomaster working very closely together to develop this hardware. The original Nexus was released at the same time as Rotoflight version 2.0. I tried to work at that time with the Rotoflight development team to make a set of how-to and setup videos for launch, but unfortunately they weren't interested, sadly. However, here we are over a year later, and it's obviously gone well enough that Radio Master has continued to develop the product, and now we have these two new versions, the X and the XR. The big difference between the two is that the XR has an inbuilt Express LRS receiver in it, and they're available in lots of different colors, gray, gold, red, blue, and purple. So what are the headlines for these things? Well, again, this is really an open source fly barless control unit. The code on here is going to be Rotoflight. Rotoflight was a kind of a fork of Betaflight and they rewrote most of it actually to turn it into something that would fly a helicopter. And these are optimized for Rotoflight version 2.2 that's currently out. Inside, there's an F722 processor and an ICM 426AP 6-axis gyro and accelerometer for very nice IMU control. In here, there's 256 meg of flash memory. Multiple UARTs are supported, so it's going to support things like CRSF, Express LRS, SBUS, and lots of other things too. It's plug and play with Express LRS. Uh, the RP3H Express LRS receivers that were brought out last year will just snap into this, making connections super simple. There are additional pins for the expanded control in the more complex setups. The case again is CNC machined aluminium, so that means that it's nice and rugged, and it also acts as a heat sink to keep the components cool inside. Compatible with 760 microsecond and 1520 microsecond tail servos and ESCs. Capable of supporting 12 volt servos, supports 3.6 to 70 volt batteries, and gives nice, stable, reliable power delivery for the electronics to make sure everything works okay. It's got a dedicated 1.8 volt BEC inside for the gyro, a dedicated 3.3 volt BEC for the MCU, and a separate 5 volt. BEC for everything else to minimize the amount of noise. Dimensions on this thing are 44.7 by 26.5 by 12.3 millimeters. Weight is not a lot, it's only about 20.6 grams. So what's the difference between the X and the XR? Well, I've kind of already mentioned it really. Uh, it has the antennas on the back and those antennas are all around the fact that in here is an inbuilt XR class Express LRS receiver. And that means that it has dual Semtec SX1281 2.4 gigahertz transceivers for really good RF performance. And it also and then eliminates the need for an external receiver. Although in some instances, for larger helis, you might want that external Express RS receiver mounted well away from all the carbon that's inside the helicopter. So the summary, I guess, is that if you have been interested in the Nexus stuff, then there are two new versions available. That's why you might not have been able to get the previous ones from your normal suppliers. If you're looking for a quality flight controller for Rotor Flight 2.2, then these will be at the top of the list. However, be aware that Rotor Flight is more of an open source fly barless controller based on heavily written beta flight core. Uh, you can connect a GPS to these. I've been asked this in the past. Uh, the GPS data is used for um, information and telemetry, for things like height, speed, position, etc., but not used for actual flight modes. So it won't do things like Ardu Copter well, where it'll sit in 3D space, uh, return to home and do those other bits. Maybe that's coming in a future version of Rotorflight. 
If you want more capability out of a helicopter, I'll put a link below to my Ardu Heli series that I'm just coming to the end of that shows how you can do that with Ardu Pilot and an appropriate flight controller. I am excited about the fact that Radio Master is starting to get into the flight controller stuff. Hopefully, this is the start of something cool. I would love these things to be able to be flashed with Betaflight or ideally even iNav would be fantastic so that you could put them inside a plane. It would make the configuration really simple because all the pins are already on here. It comes with the cables to kind of snap everything in. It would be really fun to see Radio Master actually continue to develop flight controllers and who knows, either have an iNav target for this for planes and fixed wing or maybe even have something that's dedicated for fixed wing to support something like iNav. Links below if you want to go and check out the detail. But Radio Master continue to evolve from just a radio manufacturing company. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.